Assalamualaikum. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Zinat Tasneem. Uh, at present, I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Mechatronics Engineering, uh, Franz Chehi University of Engineering and Technology. Today, I'm going to talk about a new concept, which is called Digital Tui, towards the next generation virtual world. Even I'm uh, at the very beginning stage of this research, I just want to share my thoughts with you. So before going to the concept of digital twin, let's look at the technological evolution. Well, technology has a significant impact on our lives and it's evolving. Let's look at the evolution of technology with an example. I don't know whether the young generation uh, are familiar with this photo or not. I am. Uh, when I was a kid in 1990s, we had a, this type of telephone set in our house, which was uh, an important uh, mode of communication at that time. It had 10 digits and we used our fingers in a clockwise direction to dial. Then at the end of 1990s, uh, we got a new telephone set provided by BTCL, then it was known as BTTB, I think. Uh, it was called digital telephone, and the, the, it, it contains a uh, few buttons. Two more buttons were added, that was star and hash, but we didn't use them at that time. Then finally, in 2007, I got my personal mobile phone. It was not a smartphone, it was a simple, Mobile phone with a small screen and some buttons. But what about now? All of us, we have our own mobile phones with a big, big and wide screen with lots of functionalities, right? Yes. This is the evolution of technology. And this evolution it's not, is not constant. It's not linear. Rather, it's exponential. That is, the rate at which the technology is changing is accelerating every day, every moment. Now, what are the consequences of this technological evolution? Let's look at another example. My mother is a big fan of music, and she had almost 150 cassettes in our house. And she used to listen to her favorite old Bangla and Hindi songs at that time using cassettes. Again, I'm not sure about the new generation whether you are familiar with this product or not. It was called cassettes. And my mother had a cassette player in our house. Actually, it was older than me. And uh, a few years back, after 40 years of service, finally, the cassette player retired, and my mother became very sad. So at that point, I decided to buy a cassette player for my mom. My intention was to give my mother a surprise. But actually, the surprise was waiting for me, because when I went to the market, there were no cassette players. Even CDs and CD players, they were even rarer, because people were using smartphones or mp3 players or something like that to listen to songs. This is the consequence of technological evolution. The products, the devices, the components that are very close to us today, that are very important to us today, can be vanished tomorrow. Right? This is the consequence of technological evolution. And as I have said earlier, this evolution, this rate is exponential. So it can happen that the change in technology in, uh, that is going to be happen after, say, five years is almost unimaginable from now. The digital twin is one of the consequences of this technological evolution. And it is expected that digital twin is going to ruin the world. Now, what is digital twin? Let's come to the main theme of my speech today, the digital twin. Digital twin is made up of data sets and it is a virtual representation of a physical object, which can accurately mimic the performance 
of the physical object in a virtual platform. Kind of simulation, but its, it's importance and its performance is far, far behind that. So digital, the concept of digital twin was first used in David Gelander's 1991 book called Mirror Worlds. And Michael Graves of Polida Institute of Technology implemented the concept of digital twin in manufacturing. And rather, NASA implemented this concept in their 2010 roadmap report. So what, what does digital twin do? Why do we need digital twin? Let's take another example. Let's take the example of wind turbine. Because I'm working in the field of wind turbine right now, and one of my students of my university is working on this concept. He is trying to make a digital twin of a wind turbine. So suppose a wind turbine, we, we want to establish or install a wind turbine in a particular area. So what do we need first? First, we need to we need to have a perfect design and optimized design under the criteria provided in that area. So what do we do actually? In, uh, previously, we, uh, we used to check our uh, designs by trial and error methods. And uh, we can use at that time and present time, we can use some computational or simulation based approach. Uh, but it takes time, you know. Uh, I think some of our, some of the students here presented here, uh, they are familiar with the simulation approach and they are familiar with the time uh, uh, consuming problem. So uh, these simulation approaches, they need time to check one possible combination of digital twin, one possible combination of wind turbine. What, what are the possible combinations? What can be the possible combinations? Like how many number of blades? Uh, will be needed, what angle of the blade will be perfect, uh, in which direction it should be uh, set up, set, installed, etc. etc. So we need to find out the best possible combinations. But using the simulation based approach, the time to check one possible combination is significant. Therefore, we cannot check uh, uh, lots of combinations uh, within a short time. But what about digital twin? Well, digital twin is made of data set and it is capable of checking thousands of possible combinations for a wind turbine within the blink of an eye. So what happens? The number of possible combinations uh, that we can check increases. So the output accuracy increases and at the same time, the time that was, that was needed, that was needed to check the, to optimize the design reduces. So it helps in designing and optimization performance. Again, um, the wind turbine is installed for at least 25, 40 or uh, more years. So what, what will be the performance of a wind turbine after 20 years of its installation? Can we predict it using our uh, existing simulation based approach? It's very difficult. but a digital twin made up of data set, if we can add aging features, yes, it can predict the performance of the, of the wind turbine after 10, 15, 5 or even more years. So digital twin is capable of predicting the aging effects of the wind turbine. Then what happens? Uh, after the installation of the wind turbine, should we delete the digital twin version? What do you think? Anyone? Should we delete it? No. Why? Because the digital twin is capable of monitoring the performance of the wind turbine throughout its whole life cycle. Let me take another example. Uh, suppose after five years of installation of wind turbine, weather office has informed us that a tornado is going to hit the turbine. The tornado, the wind speed will be this and the direction will be this. What we can do? We may have few time in our hands, five days, seven days, or even less. What will we do? Well, if we have a digital counterpart in our hand, we will create a virtual tornado in our virtual platform. And we will ask the virtual tornado to hit the turbine. 
so that you can find what what consequences are going to what what are the effects after the tornado. So in this in this process, we can determine or we can uh, select the best preventive measures, and even we can implement the preventive measures on that wind turbine before the turbine physically hits the, before the tornado physically hits the wind turbine. So, in this way, the digital twin is capable of monitoring the physical wind turbine throughout its whole life cycle. So, if I draw a summary of, a, of uh, the effects of digital twin for a wind turbine, what happens? Number one, it helps in design and optimization part. Number two, it helps to predict the aging effects. And number three, it, it is capable of monitoring the performance of the wind turbine throughout its whole life cycle. Now, the digital twin concept is not limited to wind turbine only. It can be implemented in a variety of sectors, like in robotics, in intelligent manufacturing, in agriculture, in medicine, and so on. And I believe that it's not far away that researchers will be able to build a digital twin of human being. It may happen that in future, we personal human being, the physical human being, uh, uh, will not face the interview face to face. Uh, it may happen that our twin version, the employer, uh, the, 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 the company, uh, uh, it will use our twin version, it will use the twin version of the applicant to check the performance. It may happen that in future, a digital twin can be used in medical sector to predict the future diseases of a particular individual. So, this digital twin concept is emerging and I believe this is not far away from us. Similarly, the fields related to this digital twin concept, like data mining, data science, data storage, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, IoT, these fields are going to emerge in the future research. So, as a researcher, uh, a baby researcher, I call myself a baby researcher because I believe I'm in the baby stage in the vast research. So uh, being a baby researcher, it's my little suggestion to the infant researchers, right? That you please, if you are working, if you are going to pursue a research in a technological field, please, please, please put some effort before starting your research because technology is evolving. What we are having, what, what is very important to us today, it can be phased out tomorrow. So please predict the future generation researchers and try to conduct your research in those points. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me in this event today. Welcome you all to the virtual world. Let's grab into the virtual world, take the best of it, but please don't forget our physical identity. Thank you.